Hello, my name is John, and welcome back to the channel. In today's episode, we have the creepiest, I think my house is haunted, stories. Don't forget to like and subscribe. When I was little, I had a loft bed with a desk underneath. I've always been a pretty heavy sleeper, I could fall asleep at a concert, so it was strange when I began waking up at 3 in the morning every morning. What was even more strange were the noises coming from the attic. Shuffling, knocking, boxes moving. My 9-year-old brain rationalized it as an animal or bird that had gotten in. After a few weeks of shit sleep, I decided to knock back on my sealing the shave and a haircut pattern because I was bored and hadn't interacted with whatever was in the attic. I waited in silence for a few minutes until I was about to fall back asleep, and then I heard it. From the ceiling a foot from my face, it knocked back the pattern. Every night when I woke up, I'd knock and sometimes get a response. It gradually stopped over the years but I still wake up at 3 AM every night. It's weird but it only happens in my room, I sleep fine in hotels and other houses. 13 years later and I've just been getting weird vibes around my house. I feel like I'm being watched. I sometimes hear someone saying my name, most notably before bed and whatever said it is very close to my ear. I can feel their breath as they whisper, and it freaks me out so much that it takes hours to get back to sleep. The shuffling in the attic also started up again but I don't want to knock back anymore. There's a lot of weird shit that happens, things get moved, my dogs and cats stare at the same blank spot, but these are just what's been currently happening. I just don't know what to do anymore. This sort of thing only happened to me once, but left an impression on me. I am not sure if it was an apparition, or if I dreamed it. I never told anyone the truth, as I fear I would not be believed. My father and his brother Gary were lifelong dairy farmers in central Wisconsin. We lived close by and labor was traded during harvests. As I got older he would send me saying, you have to go and help at Gary's today. I grew up and took over the farm and cousin Mike took over for his father Gary. Gary died about 15 years ago. Mike sold the dairy herd and found other employment. I rent his land. My father passed away in 2013. In 2014 I sold the dairy herd. It was an October night in Wisconsin. My cousin Mike started a fire in the wood-fired furnace in the basement and went to bed. His sister had just gotten out of a bad relationship and was living there too. She arrived home from her job at about midnight, added some wood to the furnace and went to bed too. Transitioning over to all crops, in the fall of 2015 I was driving around the state looking at used equipment. What I told everyone is this, passing through the nearest large town, about 25 miles away, I decided to stop and get a meal. Seeing a movie playing that I wanted to see I stopped in to see it. Then stopped at a local bar and had a few soft drinks before returning home. Passing by his place on the way home at 3 AM. I saw flames coming from out of the chimney and smoke coming from the outside basement door. I dialed 911, and ran in yelling for them to get up, there was very little smoke in the upstairs of the house. Mike and I went downstairs and found an area about 3 feet square above the furnace on fire. We put it out with a fire extinguisher and water. The fire department arrived to put out the chimney fire. There was very little smoke damage to the house and minimal repairs, but a few more minuets and the fire would have burned up into the kitchen. The truth is, I got home about 10.30 PM and went to bed. Sometime a little before 3 AM my father, wearing his bib overalls, something he never wore after his retirement, opened my room door, turned on the light and said, get up, you have to go and help out at Gary's. I remember saying, in the morning. He then put on his most authoritative voice and said, no, right now. I sat bolt upright in bed. My room door was open, and the light, and the hallway light was on. I tried to brush it off as imagination, but I knew I had closed the door and turned off the lights. Knowing with the adrenaline rush and doubts I would not get back to sleep, I decided to dress and check on Mike's place, that's when I saw the fire and smoke. Like I said, I never told anyone the truth as I fear no one would have believed me. My parents bought a, at this point, 110 year old house about 10 years ago and it feels everybody but me has had a paranormal experience in the house. My parents said they've seen a short, kinda chubby ginger kid appear at random spots in the house. Sometimes just standing in the washer slash dryer room and vanishing, sometimes they'd see him at the top of the stairs and he'd walk towards my room, hooray, and disappear. Eventually, my parents were tired of it so they had my grandfather, very Christian guy, come and bless the house, and the appearances stopped. My brother has talked about staying up late at night and hearing someone walk up the stairs, they're very old so they are very squeaky, walk to his closed door, 
jiggle the door knob, original doors, so there was a quarter turn of play in the knobs, a bunch, stop, and walk back down the steps and stop. Didn't hear a door open or close, they just stopped at the bottom of the steps. My mom has also described seeing something peek out from around corners at her as she's sitting watching TV at night, she thinks it's probably just her slowly falling asleep and seeing things, but is still unsettling for her. There was a period of time where the mudroom door would kinda flex randomly like a change of air pressure. This usually happens whenever someone opens an outside door and closes it, but nobody ever was near a door, or the doors were locked. Probably just some weird phenomena caused by an old house, but still creepy. And yet here I am, who probably spent the most time up and alone in the middle of the night in that house, not seeing or hearing anything that wasn't explainable from night terrors and sleep paralysis, which I've always had, at multiple houses. My friend Carl's last apartment had two ghosts. One was a little girl who would play with your hair while you were hanging out in the living room as well as running along the vertical blinds making them swing back and forth. The second I never saw or heard but I did feel him. One night, I locked myself out of my apartment, we lived in the same complex one building over from each other, so I asked to crash Carl's place for the night while he went to work. But he had told me don't go into his room. There is a male ghost who will tell you that you don't belong in there. His previous roommate had let several friends crash his room and a tall black shadow opened the door and said get out to all of them. Freak them the hell out. So here I am on the couch in the living room. Head on the end of the couch that looks down the hall to the bedrooms and bathroom. I swear I was being watched. Then it hit me. I needed to pee. And the bathroom is right across the hall from Carl's bedroom. Fan. Fantastic. So I slowly creep down the hall and about 5 feet from my goal I said hey man I just need to use the bathroom. Then it felt like a cloud of energy got pulled back into the bedroom despite the door being closed. So I did my thing and hauled ass back to the couch but I put my head on the other end of the couch. Nothing outstanding but just a really creepy vibe. On the positive side at least Carl had someone looking out for him. I used to live in a basement apartment when I was in grad school. The landlady lived in the main house and while she herself was super nice and cool, her house always felt really off to me. However, she charged a reasonable amount of rent and I was only 2 miles from school. About a week or two after I moved in, I had gone to bed and the apartment was pitch black at night. If my landlady ever wanted to speak to me, I would hear the doors above the stairs unlock and she would call out to me. One night, I heard movement on the steps but I didn't hear her unlock the doors and it was probably 2 in the morning. She certainly didn't call me saying she needed to talk to me. I hear these heavy steps descending the stairs but I'm so scared that I shrink further in my bed to hide. The floor begins to creak towards my door and then nothing for a few seconds. I'm not sure if it is safe to relax and go back to bed. Then I hear the door no start to turn. My fear makes me so scared that I pull the covers over my head to hide. I prayed the whole time under the covers. The next thing I know it's finally morning. I stayed in that apartment for two years. When it was my graduation, I slept in a hotel because there was no room for my family to sleep. That night in the hotel was the first restful sleep I had in what felt like forever. Apart from specters appearing at random intervals, the most chilling was the night before Christmas. For background, the spirit in our home had proved to be very possessive of me and kept attempting to keep me from my boyfriend and win my attention, maybe affection? Every night when he would be working into the wee hours, I fell asleep in our room with the bedroom door unlocked to grant him easy access. Every night when he got home, it was firmly locked. I heard him calling for me in other rooms while showering and would emerge to find the house always empty and BF at the gas station or in the backyard. It would sit next to me on the bed, appear to me while bathing, rap on the wall when I was alone. Always after my attention. My then boyfriend was deployed, and I was just starting on a glass of wine, settling onto the living room couch. We had decorated right before he left, but I was lonely and hadn't heard from him in a day or two. A few tears slipped, and I heard a sound. No branch had moved, there was no breeze or fan, but a glass ball had gently dropped from the tree onto the wood floor without breaking. I stared at it as it stayed in place for a second under the tree, then it slowly rolled four feet in my direction, over the lip of the thick, heavy rug, which shouldn't have been possible, and stopped directly in front of my feet. The first of many gifts to cheer me up. I received a vintage children's card, a queen of spades with torn edges and yellowed paper, shortly after. I don't know where it came from. It appeared one day, and when I would throw it out, it would appear somewhere else. The garage. The windowsill. Under the bed. One time my boyfriend threw it out. As if in angry retaliation, when I was in the bath that evening, the spirit of a woman sat on my chest, pressing me into the water. I couldn't move, it was like a night terror, but with risk of drowning. 
She had such a twisted, hateful face. After a moment of clawing at the sides of the tub, I was released. We sold the house earlier this year and moved across the country. We found out that the previous owner had been a depressed, manic hoarder who kept animals she, seemingly, abused in the home. I don't know what had happened to her, if it's guaranteed she died in the house or what, but the spirit that dwelled there was the unhappiest thing I'd ever encountered. I almost feel sorry for it. Growing up I used to live in a fairly large two-story house. I'm pretty sure it was built in the early 1900s because when we moved in during the mid-90s my dad told me it was 100 years old at that point. It was a really cool house with a huge backyard, but there were some really creepy parts. The basement, of course, was dark, unfinished, and had two small rooms facing each other. One of the rooms was creepy, it had these weird dividers on the floor made of plywood, kind of how you would imagine stalls in a horse stable but on a much smaller scale. On the landing heading to the second floor was a big door about halfway up the wall that led to an attic space. The door wasn't attached in any way it was just leaned up against the jam. This attic was creepy, because on the walls were newspaper clippings of people with their eyes scratched out. Like that is some super cliche horror movie thing but seeing it in real life was spooky. There were always a lot of weird noises in that house, it was old so it's to be expected. We would hear creaks and knocks, sometimes the occasional bang, but we would rarely see anything really strange. It didn't seem like a haunted house at all, that is until one day my younger brother and my cousin were playing with a webcam, making a video on Windows Movie Maker. In the video my brother starts adjusting the camera, and as soon as he moves his hand away you can very clearly see something moving behind them, which quickly ducks behind them and disappears. My brother didn't notice but my cousin did, he quickly turned around to check, but didn't see anything. We watched that video over and over, and I eventually noticed that you can see whatever it is actually materialize while my brother is moving the camera around. Whatever it was it looked kind of like the head of a bat, but about the size of a fist. I've seen and heard a lot of weird things aside from that, but that was the only real experience from that creepy ass house. I spent my childhood, until I was 9, in McLean, Virginia, suburbs of Washington DC. I lived there with my parents and three siblings who were much older, 14, 16, 17, until they had all moved out by the time I was around 6. The house was a single level with a large finished basement. I had various paranormal experiences as a child, the most common was a women's voice randomly saying my name, even when my parents were out in the yard and I was alone in the house. It was never threatening, just a woman with normal voice calmly saying my name. Though of course it scared the hell out of me. The other experience I had was really creepy, sometimes if I woke up in the middle of night a scene would be playing on my bedroom wall, always the same scene, a old-fashioned horse and buggy pulling up and a woman getting out. It was faded and jittery like it was being playing on an old projector and had a sort of strobe effect. Always the same scene, and then it would just stop and the room would go dark again. The last experience I had was the scariest and thankfully the last, it was the week my family was getting ready to move, my aunt and uncle had come down to help and I was playing hide and seek with my cousins. I hid in a downstairs closet. The last thing I remember is a sensation of hands around my neck strangling me, the next thing I remember is my cousin standing over me screaming for help. My parents rushed me to the emergency room, they checked me over and could find nothing wrong, the doctor concluded I had suffered an asthma attack, though I had no history of asthma before, or after that one event. So we move into a newly built, and absolutely the most unhaunted house in existence, and over the years I just chalk my experiences up to an overactive childhood imagination. Fast forward 10 years, I'm now a freshman in college and my brothers and sisters are all in for Thanksgiving. Conversation turns to the old house in McLean and my sister says I never was so happy as the day I got married and moved out of that haunted hellhole. This is the first I had ever heard any of my family say they had similar experiences, so for the first time ever we began comparing notes. My sister told us about seeing a woman in white dress on several occasions. In one instance, she was laying in bed on the phone when she saw a woman walk into her bedroom, stand by the mirror, fidget like she was putting on an earring then just walk out. My sister said she assumed it was our mom, though mom was always the blue jeans type so my sister was curious why she was dressing up. So my sister hung up the phone and walked into the kitchen and mom was just standing at the sink in her blue jeans doing dishes. She asked mom if she was just in her room, and mom said no. I've been doing dishes for the last half hour. My brothers seemed embarrassed and wouldn't go into the detail about what they saw, they just kind of blew it off by saying, we say some strange things, but we were smoking a lot of dope at the time, so who knows what was real and what wasn't. Likewise my mom said we were pretty much all crazy as she had spent more time in the house than anyone and never saw anything whatsoever. 
though my sister told me later that wasn't entirely true as mom had told her once when she was much younger about seeing the women in white. She just said that mom was just so determined that none of them talk about it around me when I was young, and the subject was so off limits that mom had actually convinced herself it never happened. My dad had perhaps the most bizarre story. He was an electrician and had a workshop in the basement. One day he was working with his soldering iron, sat it down on the workbench, turned around to pick up a tool and when he turned back around it was simply, gone. Needless to say he was a bit worried that a hot soldering iron had fallen somewhere it might start a fire, so he searched all over for it, but it was simply nowhere to be found. At first he thought one of my brothers was playing a prank, but he realized they couldn't have gotten into the workshop and grabbed it without him seeing, and when he went to check neither of them were even home. Eventually he just threw his hands up in the air in disbelief and went out and bought another one. Then fast forward several months to Christmas time, the Christmas tree and all the decorations were kept in a closet next to the workshop, during the year there were boxes piled around the door so it wasn't even accessible. Dad opens the door and turns on the light, and there lays his soldering iron right on top of the very first box, the cord tightly wound around it and looking like it had been gently sat right where it would be seen. Curiously, this was the exact same closet I had the strangling incident in. Then my dad tells a really scary story. He said that after he and my mom got married and bought the house, and before any of us kids came along, his niece was trying to get a job in DC, so she asked if she could move in until she found a job. He told her sure, and fixed up a bedroom in the basement so she could have some privacy. The first night he and my mom were awakened to a loud scream, dad grabbed his gun from the nightstand and rushed downstairs thinking there must be an intruder. His niece was sitting on the edge of the bed, her face pale white, a look of terror on her face. He tried to get her to say what happened but she would just shake her head and refuse to talk about it. She absolutely would not go back in the basement and wouldn't even get near the basement door when it was open. She slept upstairs on the couch for two days until she could make arrangements to go back home. She wouldn't even go back in the basement to get her belongings, dad had to pack them up for her. He really never had much contact with her after that, but eventually asked her mother if she ever said what she saw. Her mother claimed that she had seen someone come into the room, she thought it was just my dad coming back after having forgotten to tell her something. But when she sat up to talk, the figure of a man was grinning at her with a swollen blackened face, eyes swollen shut, covered in blood and a grinning teeth protruding from shriveled purple lips. After hearing all this my sister gets curious and did some research. The house was part of group of houses built by a housing developer in the mid-1920s. At that time most people lived near where they worked, but he got the idea he could build a housing development for upper-income federal workers who would like to live in a more rural setting and commute to work. This idea was actually about 25 years ahead of its time as suburbs really didn't exist in the 1920s. He worked out a deal with a contractor, if he built the houses, he could have one of his choice as payment. Unfortunately, when the stock market collapsed the country went into a depression both the developer and the contractor lost everything. The contractor ended up hanging himself in the house he had picked for his own, which, you guessed it, was ours. The house sat empty for several years and then was bought by a couple with no children. The husband died shortly thereafter, but the wife lived there for the rest of her life until she passed away and my parents purchased it. Reading between the lines, I think the bad spirit in the basement that my dad's niece saw and tried to choke me was the ghost of the contractor that had killed himself in the house. I think the lady in white was harmless, maybe even protective, probably the old lady that had lived there prior to my parents. I also think she was the one that whispered my name. As for the horse and buggy, I don't think that was really even related to the house, just some scene from long before the house was built that replayed over and over. On a side note, the house was torn down in 2009 and now a swanky looking million dollar home sits in its place. Not sure if the spirits have now found rest, but I have noticed the house has already been resold three times since 2012 when it was built, so people don't seem to be staying long. I lived in this big pre-war building in NYC and every night after I put my daughter to sleep in her room, I would lay in my bed and watch TV. The way my bed was angled I could see a sliver of the hallway out of the corner of my eye. I would always see this tall shadow pass by the door and it would jar me. I would always look over but see nothing after that. After a few years, I got so used to it I didn't even flinch anymore. In fact, I had honestly started to believe I just had some sort of vision problem that caused me to see the shadow in my peripheral vision. Eventually we moved out but a week before we did my daughter and I were just hanging out on my bed one night watching TV. All our boxes were pretty much packed, the whole apartment was ready to go. I was laying on my bed in my usual spot and my daughter was laying at the foot of the bed playing with her dolls. Again, my vision problem acted up and I saw the shadow out of the corner of my eye. I didn't flinch or look over, I hadn't in years I was so used to it. 
But all of a sudden my 8 year old child goes who was that? Ho. Oh. Lee. Fuck. I jumped up out of the bed. You saw that? Moved into a 100 year old house. Anytime I went downstairs while my daughter was napping, I would hear it running through the house. Several times I thought it was my cheeky toddler that had woken up. Figured out it only happened when I left her alone upstairs sleeping and firmly believed it was just a small child spirit checking on her. Still creeped me the fuck out. Came back upstairs one day and told it how I knew it was worrying about her, and checking in on her but that I would never go further away than the yard. That I appreciated that it cared, but it was actually making me really scared. I said that if she was ever in actual danger that I would absolutely appreciate its help if I didn't realize but otherwise it was only making me worried. I only ever heard those footsteps once more. In the first few days I bought my second baby home from the hospital. I think my little friend was just reminding me that it would watch this baby for me too. My old aunt used to complain that the next door neighbors were making all kinds of noise at 3 am. Number 1, I doubted she could hear them since her hearing was really bad, and number 2, those were just a nice family with two little kids so I doubted they would be up making noise that late. When she died, before we sold the house, we pulled up the carpet, and there was a D sort of etched into the nice wood floors and no matter how much we sanded it it would not go away. Then the realtor was in the house taking photos alone in the house. She was in a room in the back of the house with a bank of windows and had closed the door of this room to get the entire view. She went to leave the room and could not get out. The door was not lockable and she had to call out the window to people on the sidewalk to come into the house through the unlocked front door to let her out. The door that she was stuck behind opened easily. They even tested it again and it opened without a problem. There were other things that I'm not remembering now. We talked to the new owners after they'd been in the house for a year or more and asked how they liked the house. They said my aunt finally seemed happy with them and hasn't been haunting them as much as before. My damn pizza cutters. We have been in our house for about 10 years and our pizza cutters just disappear. At first we didn't think anything about it, just lost it and got another one. Not too long after that it's gone too. Now I'm thinking it's a little strange, I can't find it, looked everywhere. Got another one thinking this one better not disappear. I don't even know if I got to use that one before it was gone. I then bought a cheapo one from the dollar store, and said, watch this one be gone soon and before I knew it, gone. There might have been a couple more but you get the idea. I have searched everywhere in my kitchen, I painted the cabinets last year and had them completely taken apart and all drawers pulled out, the stove was moved, there was nowhere they could be hidden, and still no sign of the pizza cutters. I have not bought another one since then and have just kind of accepted we can't have a pizza cutter. We still have the original utensils from when we first moved in together 14 years ago, but I can't keep a pizza cutter. A house that my mom, my stepdad and myself lived in years ago was once a meth lab where many people died in an explosion. This house always gave off creepy feelings. First day we were there I noticed blood smeared on the back door and I thought nothing of it thinking maybe it was just mud, but this was in the dead of winter. Next, I was woken up in the middle of the night by gibberish being spewed into my ears and a hard firm tug on my leg that couldn't have been a spasm because it pulled my entire body across my bed. We'd all wake up with several scratches on us, we didn't own a cat but we had a Boston Terrier that had never scratched us before living there so we didn't think it was her. Me and my mom had been hissed at by something, once was when she was going to bring laundry in the basement when she was home alone and she told me she screamed out loud fuck this and went into the dining room and immediately called my stepdad trying to get him to come home from work. The inside window of the dining room decided to explode and the outside one was intact. After we moved out, our distant cousins moved in and they had told us they experienced similar things before we ever mentioned having anything happening when we lived there. Couldn't pay me enough money in the world to get me to live there again. Rented a two-story house with a basement a few years back. Every single morning at roughly 8.30 am, we would hear footsteps going down the stairs from the second floor, down to the basement. Eventually, we found a hidden room in the basement, that the first time we entered it, my wife's phone went into super static over loudspeaker mode for no apparent reason, then stopped. When I got married, I had a friend come over the night before and we smoked some spice. Synthetic weed, or so it was sold as. Turns out it's much worse, and I'm very glad it didn't kill me, he told me about a ghost in the house that was following him around and telling him to leave, left physical scratch marks on him. Same night, we heard a knock on the second floor balcony, and we went to investigate. We could both very clearly see a corporeal form, or a ghostly visage, though we couldn't make out any specifically human anything, other than its general human outline. Honestly, looking at it looked kinda like an almost invisible lightning globe thing you can get from Spencer's for 20 bucks, but that was literally walking around. Now, this isn't something that just I could see, or that just he could see. 
We could both see him, in the same place, at the same time. He asked us if he could come inside I already know, majorly bad idea. We were high, and we said yes. We watched him come inside and sit down. We cut on a movie. We would routinely look at him, and then each other, both verifying that the other could very clearly see him, he was still there, and we were both seeing the same thing. To be clear, two very separate people were able to see and speak to the same ghostly being, at the same time. Again, we could both see him, and could watch him move around. I have heard of mass hallucinations before, and I can't help but feel like this could be that situation. We were high, after all. However, this was in a known haunted house, and two separate people were able to point out his exact location, completely separate of the other, at any point in time, and there was never any disagreement on where he was. I can't stress this enough, we both thought we were going crazy and hallucinating at the time, and thus would each check the ghost's location with the other at random points in time, and at no point in time were either of us wrong. We were both very clearly able to see this thing, the entire time. He only left after we went to bed. The kids' toys would get rearranged but in ways the kids couldn't do it. For example, there was a music box slash shape sort of thing, you had to put the blocks in to make it work. One day the blocks were just gone nowhere, we lived in a tiny house and I was super meticulous about cleaning up the playroom and making sure all the pieces of everything were where they belonged it was a big deal to me, so one evening I'm cleaning the play area and I put the box away and the little blocks were lost. I tore the room apart searching for them, looked around the house. I checked everywhere. Next day I walked by the play area and the blocks were stacked on the very top of the shelves where no one could reach. Another time it was a toy that had plastic boulders again, putting the toys away the balls are nowhere. I do the same searching as before and finally give up. A couple of days later, I'm taking the baby to put her to bed and they were just sitting in the middle of the floor in the nursery. A lot of things like that almost always with toys. But the other crazy thing was that a lot of the pictures of my daughter we took in that house has a little shine right above her head and to the right. Nobody else. For the record, I don't believe in ghosts. But the first house my wife and I bought, it was an old two-story home from the 1910s. We couldn't find the realtor key to get inside, so we were looking around on the porch and I glanced upstairs in time to see a hand pull away from the curtain, as if someone had looked down to see what the commotion was. Oh, there's someone inside. We're all calling out to come let us in, but no answer. A few minutes later we find the key, and let ourselves in. Naturally, there is nobody inside. Beautiful old place with a grand library room out front, partitioned by these two pillars. We buy it. After we move in, the neighbor comes by such a lovely house. So sad about the previous owners. Turns out the couple who had owned it both met an untimely end in a car wreck the day they signed the papers to sell it. Afterward, we discovered the continual creaks and thumps of the house. If you were sitting downstairs, it would sound like furniture was being moved around upstairs. More than once my wife would come up to ask what the hell I was doing thumping around. I'd been sitting in my chair reading the whole time. Just countless things like this. Taps on the walls when you were laying in bed. Thock 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 on the wooden steps leading up to the second floor. Just all the time. Old houses make noise. They stretch and shrink as the temperature changes. But I never told anyone else that. Guests would hear the thumping in the hallway and be all WTF? And I'd arch an eyebrow and put my finger to my lips. Shh. The place had an interesting history. It has been the local Catholic church rectory, until there was some sort of scandal about its construction by the local timber company owner, that got the resident priest literally sent to Mozambique of some shit. I was sad to leave it. Sometimes I still drive by and stop and look at it when I'm in the neighborhood. This story is kind of hard to tell, because it's a pretty big coincidence. The last time I told this story, the person didn't believe me, but here I am. I have moved many, many times. In my state there's an area called Down East. It's not a county or anything, just a name for the area. Well, my hometown was in Down East. After moving several times, I ended up back in the area about 8 years after I had originally moved. I was 12 at the time, 4 when I had moved originally. Let me just set a little bit of the scenery. The Down East area is known by my family for being in the genuine middle of nowhere. We were moving in a trailer that the last owners had absolutely destroyed. It was actually the most disgusting mess I've ever seen. It took a very long time for my mom and stepdad to clean. Almost all summer from what I can remember. Before moving to this trailer, I had lived in a farmhouse that was also in the Down East area. And before that, I had lived in a city. A small city, but a city nonetheless. I absolutely hated moving to the farmhouse and hated moving to the trailer even more. So there we were, we had just moved in and the new school year was right around the corner. 
nothing paranormal happened to anyone for a while. There were three incidents I can recall off the top of my head. Only two of them I was there. The first one occurred at dinner. Someone in my family, I forgot who, asked if someone could close the window behind the kitchen table. The window immediately shut on its own. Not just shut, but slammed. The second happened when we were trying to find something to watch. We had just moved into a new house that was, I remind you, in the middle of nowhere. Because of this, finding an internet service provider was difficult. The only good one available was going to take a few weeks to set the internet up. In the meantime, we had old DVDs, anybody even remember those, on a bookshelf next to the TV to entertain us. My mom and stepdad were old school. As a matter of fact, my stepdad was about to forget the internet and just use the data on our phones. Which means we would have had three useless $400 PCs. Anyway, we were looking for a movie to watch when suddenly a copy of Charlie and the Mother F.G. Chocolate Factory flew out into the middle of the living room floor for absolutely no apparent reason. The third incident was from my mom. She said that my younger sister's backpack was sitting in the middle of the kitchen table and just flew off randomly. She said the window was closed. This may sound like your average oh shit that thing moved kind of my house is haunted, but it isn't. Here's the real kicker. One day, my grandfather came to visit the house for the first time. One of the first things he mentioned was the trailer's location and relevance to a red house next door. My mom was confused about this random detail my grandfather had pointed out, especially the red house was in disarray and probably abandoned. My grandfather said that he'd talk about it later. I didn't know what it was at the time. We eventually moved out of that house due to personal problems and after another couple of months trying to find a place, we moved back to the city in an apartment. We still live in the same apartment complex all these years later. Anyways, after about a year, we got talking about the past, me and my mom. She mentioned the old trailer and how strange it was. She then said that one day, my grandfather told her that the red house next door was where her cowsing committed suicide. Take this story with a grain of salt. Maybe the window was actually open when the backpack fell off the table when it was centered in the table. Maybe the wind slammed the window shut right after we suggested closing it. My grandfather is getting old, so maybe he mistook the red house for a different house. Maybe the movie just. Actually I can't think of an explanation for that off the top of my head right now. Whether we were all just too isolated or something really was going on there paranormally, I don't know. It's just a story now. Many years ago, maybe three years after my father died. Still in my childhood home. My father was a very large man. Six feet plus and over 300 pounds every night, without fail, when I was a child he would come check on me whenever he was on his way to bed, he loved his horror movies, but my mom hated them. So he would watch them after she went to bed. They slept on the floor above me. One night me and my dog, Buddy, were still awake at about 12-ish, the usual time he would come check in on us. I heard his footsteps coming up the hallway. We lived in a really old house, and him being such a huge dude, had a very specific sound when he walked through the hallway. I heard it. Same steps. Same weight. Same pace. All the way up the hallway right up to my bedroom door. I had never been so hopeful and terrified at the same time. All I wanted was for him to walk back in my door. I would have chalked it up to the stress of losing him, or maybe just the floorboard settling. But it stopped. Right when it got to my door. And then, right as Buddy was fixated on my door handle, the same moment I would have seen it turn. Buddy got up, off my bed. Walked to the door, sniffed the door crack, and his tail started wagging. Cue me sobbing. Never believed in it before, don't know if I believe it now. But I can hope. I was never ready to lose him, and I don't think I ever would have been. But hearing those steps sometimes when I stay in that old room, brings me more comfort than anything else possibly could. One night I was woken up at around 1am by a ghostly white hand opening the door to my bedroom. The hand was quite high off the ground which was odd because my husband wasn't home and the only other person in the house was my two-year-old son. I called out to my son but there was no answer. I got out the bed and left my room only to see that there was no one in the hallway. I switched on the hallway light and noticed smoke coming from my son's room at the other end of the hallway. I rushed over to his room and saw that he was fast asleep and still neatly tucked in under his blankets. His bed lamp was on as usual, and his bedroom window curtain had somehow ended up inside the bed lamp which was open at the top and the curtain had begun to smolder. Which was responsible for the smoke. It looked like it was about to catch fire at any moment. I removed the curtain from the bed lamp and potentially saved our home from burning down and my son from getting killed. I still don't know whose hand that was that opened my bedroom door. I like to think that it was a guardian angel, 
but I spoke with some people at our church and they warned me that there are no guardian angels and it was most likely an evil presence in the house trying to win my favor before it turns nasty. The Refreshing Peppermint Ghost A few years ago, December or November, my dad and I noticed a strong smell of peppermint in the basement hallway. Dad had recently unpacked the Christmas decorations we keep down there, so we figured something peppermint scented got jostled, and released the smell. Interesting, but not too weird. Except, after that, every so often, we'd smell it again. In different spots. Upstairs, down, ground floor, even on the front stoop, outside the door. Not just a whiff, either, it'd persist in one spot for hours. Several people would notice it. The first few times was still during Christmas season, so yeah, there's probably peppermint stuff around that we're not thinking about. But it kept happening. For months, over a year maybe? We'd smell it somewhere for a day or so, it'd go away, and a few days or weeks later we'd smell it somewhere else. The sightings, smellings? Got rarer and rarer and now it's been years since the last one. I miss it. It was a nice smell and a fun surprise to find oh, the peppermint ghost is back. Do any of us actually think it was supernatural? No. Not at all. Just weird air current stuff or something. But we always called it the peppermint ghost. Should note, around the same time span, in that same basement hallway, a light fixture fell off the ceiling and smashed while no one was downstairs, not even the cat. Haven't figured that one out either. I was about eight and lived in this house, built in 2000, for about two years. The entire time my family lived there, I heard my name called multiple times a day. It was always a woman calling for me and I assumed it was my mother but when I would go running to her, she always denied it. She isn't the type to play pranks either so I believe her. I also would have frequent dreams of a kind lady who would sing me nursery rhymes. I don't remember the specifics but I didn't recognize them. She was tall with brown hair done up and she wore a long sleeved white gown. I remember it having buttons up to her neck and having lace. If I had to guess I'd say maybe Victorian style? Looking back though, I'm not convinced they were dreams. I never felt scared but quite the opposite. Never experienced anything before moving there and all my experiences stopped after moving away. Sometimes I wonder if people who have lived there since also experience those same things. Also curious as to why a seemingly old spirit would be attached there and why did it seem that I was the only one to have those experiences? My parents' house was built on top where an old farmhouse was placed, which had belonged to my mom's family for 200 years or so. Many family members had passed on the lot. Either way, when I was still living at home I would sometimes stay up after my parent had gone to bed to play video games, and when I was about 15 I did that one night. Went to bed around 2 a.m., fell asleep, dad woke me up at 3 a.m. complaining I had not turned off my video games and it was making too much noise. Went out to check, and lo and behold. I had been playing Twisted Metal 2. On the telly was the character Grasshopper being played at the Los Angeles stage, the car wrecked, burning and backing up in a circle continuously using turbo. Enemies were standing around using freeze rays and specials, but nothing had any effect. The controller didn't do anything when I was pushing the buttons, and I swear to every deity in the world when I say this, but my PS2 that I had played it on was not turned on. When I did turn it on, it stopped. Didn't sleep well THST night. Keep in mind, I don't believe in hauntings, like at all. I currently live in a house where AT at least four people have died in the room we use as a bedroom. Our black cat was born on Friday 13th, we've never been in the attic, we live by a mountain where witch killings occurred way back when, and the area here is named something like Fate Valley because there were multiple skirmishes here around 1200 years ago so many met their fate here. Haven't experienced anything. But I'll never forget my very own twisted metal 2 creepypasta. It was next to an early century unsanctified graveyard where they buried the unbaptized, as well as murderers, suicides and stonemasons. The graveyard was bad enough. The house was never scary, just felt like it had a past and you never felt quite alone. This house was split into two flats. It was the first brothel in our city's past. The first night I stayed, it sounded like there was a faint party in my lounge. My girlfriend woke up one night screaming that there was a fire and a man in white was shouting at her to get out. She never set foot in the house again. Another time, I locked myself out of the house slash couldn't find my key so my friend drove me to my girlfriend's house who had a spare. When returning and as we get out of the car, my friend saw a key appear in mid-air and I heard it hit the pavement. A crystal shop lady I befriended offered to cleanse the house. She buried amethyst points around the boundaries. She did a prayer with a large quartz crystal. The whole room lit up and coins and lighters feel from the ceiling. She believed it was a little boy trapped who had gone into the light. 
Once while having friends around, I looked in the hallway and caught a very quick glimpse of someone in a flower pattern dress moving quickly into the bathroom. My friends were all wearing jeans. Finally while moving out, I moved a drawer and a photo fell out. It was an old lady standing in the garden wearing that same dress. After I moved out, the house was repainted and the a year or two later, bulldozed and now there is a memorial native carving in its place. The energy still feels dank. Thanks for letting me share. My advice would be never move into an old house that is furnished. Furniture can hold a lot of old energy. I woke up one night being pulled out of my bed. My lower body was off the bed, my top half still on. I jumped up and turned the lights on and was thinking my nephew was just trying to scare me. No one was there. My bedroom door was closed, no one under the bed, no one in the closet, no one in the bathroom. I thought maybe it was a nightmare and I had somehow moved myself halfway off the bed. Well, for two weeks after that something would start tugging my covers at the foot of my bed, slowly pulling them off of me. I would jerk them back up onto the bed and tuck them under my feet. I slept with the lights on for a very long time after that, hardly slept at night, but would fall asleep from exhaustion only to have my blankets pulled slowly down again. One night while staying at my sister's house I was sleeping in a bed that had a metal headboard and footboard. I was awakened to what sounded like a metal pipe being slammed against the footboard. Same as other story, I jumped up, turned on the lights, no one was there. I could feel the vibrations as the bed was hit and it hit it about 10 times in a row. One house I lived in had a shadow person. It would go down the hallway towards the bedrooms. I saw it, all three of my kids saw it. My, now ex, husband did not believe us. One day the kids and I went shopping, husband stayed home. When we got back he looked at me very seriously and said I saw your shadow man. I never felt so vindicated in my life. Backstory, I had a friend over to spend the night and there was a room in between my room and my brother's room that we would be staying in. My room is just across my brother's and in the ceiling there is access to the attic. We try to stay up all night and we start hearing weird noises from the hallway. It was maybe 1am. I was joking around with my friend so I turned the lights off. That's when a loud creaking came right in front of me. A chill went down my spine, I turned the light back on and no one was there. I looked back to my friend and she threw something on the ground. We joked about it and started to watch scary movies. We started to get hungry and came up with a plan to get the leftover pizza. I saw my brother was on the PC even though he isn't supposed to play after 11. Note, we left the light on in the hall. After we microwaved the pizza we started to walk back to the room we were staying in. We stopped halfway up and saw the light in the hall was off. I turned it on and blamed it on my brother. But my friend argued he was on the PC and he would have to pass us. A few days pass and I asked him why he pranked my friend and I, he told me he was still playing his game until the PC randomly turned off. We live right beside a graveyard so as a child I was terrified. My childhood home was definitely haunted. I mean every single person who spent any significant amount of time in the house knew it and experienced something, to include family friends. My brother and I both had our beds pushed, as if someone stood at the foots of our beds and shoved them into the walls. We both audibly heard footsteps running away each time, like whatever or whoever was playing a game with us. My brother, my brother's best friend, my mother, and I all saw apparitions of a very tall figure wandering around. Sometimes in the room as we woke up. Sometimes in broad daylight. A picture of my brother and I as kids would continuously shift in its place on an armoire we had in the house. My mother is a stickler for how she had the house organized. All of the pictures were arranged slanted so that they could be seen from the primary sitting area of the room. The picture of my brother and I would always move to facing straight forward. It ramped up after I left for college and my brother would leave his room and come back to his drawers open, things on the floor, etc. My bro would also hear things in my room and think I was home. I only went to school an hour away and would visit fairly often. I remember getting the text, why the hell are you home? As I was sitting in class an hour away. My dad was always a big doubter of it all because for some reason it never really messed with him. But one night while my mom, brother, and I were all gone, the shutters downstairs started slamming. Thinking someone was trying to break in, but not in the house because the alarm hadn't gone off, he grabbed his gun and went downstairs. When he got there, a couple of their plantation shutters were swung open. He closed them and went upstairs confused only to find that the shutters next to their bed had been opened while he was downstairs. He's a believer now. My brother and I also hated our guest bedroom. Not only did we see things out of the corner of our eyes in there, but there was a feeling of unease that came with even getting close to it. My mother never felt it, but my brother and I avoided it even into adulthood. Eventually the house, located in Southern California, by the way, 
was sold to a Chinese immigrant couple and none of us have been back or experienced anything like that in our future homes. We all still talk about how insane that house and neighborhood was and speculate, sometime wildly, about what it was. Now that I'm thinking of it, the city, Temecula, was famous for having once all been native land and there were a number of burial sites found around the city as it was developing. One of these was behind our neighborhood. While we lived there, five of our neighbors got cancer. Strange. So in the townhouse my mom and I used to live in, we had a ghost we called Mr. Ghost. One night I was sitting up in my bed on the computer and had this random cough attack. So I went to the hallway where we had some cough medicine on the bookcase but it didn't have one of those little measuring cups. But I knew we had one in the medicine cabinet downstairs. I dropped the bottle in the hallway, set it back on the bookcase, and went to get a little cup. When I came back, Teresa cup on the bottle. I know it wasn't there before because when I dropped the bottle and picked it up, I would have had to pick the cup up too and I know I didn't see one. Mom was asleep and didn't know about any of this until the next day and no one else was in the house. I figured it was Mr. Ghost helping me out so I said, thank you Mr. Ghost, took my cough medicine, and went to bed. Another time, my sister and her boyfriend were staying with us for a few weeks so they slept in my room and I slept on the couch. One night, the light fixture on the ceiling fan above the bed broke. The round part covering the bulb fell off and landed on her boyfriend. The way they were sleeping, if it fell straight down it would have landed on my sister. But it went sideways and landed on him instead. Another time, my sister was home alone and taking a shower. She heard someone with boots on walk through my room on the other side of the bathroom wall and it sounded like they walked through my bedroom and went into the apartment next door. She heard something next door break and our neighbor yell what the shit. And finally, it was Mother's Day 2013. My mom just passed away a week before and I was sitting on my bed, getting ready for work, thinking how TF was I supposed to get through that day. And I heard breathing. Like someone was standing in front of me, breathing. No one else was in the house. I even checked under the bed and in the closet for the cat. No one was there. I know it wasn't my breathing because I heard my own breathing, and then this other breathing on top of it. I don't know whether it was Mr. Ghost or my mom's spirit, maybe both Ike, but it felt like one of them was trying to comfort me. It freaked me out enough to distract me from the emotional pain so that's good, I guess. This was likely more a funny coincidence than an actual haunting, but I'll throw it out there. There was this old fellow, really nice guy, I met him a few times, he lived up the road from my aunt and was a good friend of hers. He was renowned in the neighborhood for going all out putting up Christmas decorations. One Christmas, when he was in his 80s, he had apparently climbed up in his attic to get his Christmas decorations had a massive heart attack and died, his daughter found him a few hours later. Pretty sad story. Well the daughter was selling his house, we were looking for a house so ended up buying from her. My kids were young preteens at the time so they knew the story about the old guy dying in the attic and as kids do they made a whole thing out of it, daring each other to go into the attic, trying to scare each other by knocking on the walls and saying it's the old man's ghost. Just basically dumb kid stuff. Well our first Christmas arrived, I had bought the Christmas presents and was trying to hide them before the kids got home. I hate avoided the attic because, well, I just never had a reason to go up there and even as an adult it did seem a bit creepy to rummage around on the spot someone died but I figured I was just being stupid. So I opened the access door, pulled down the ladder, and climbed up and pulled the string light bulb. The attic was completely empty as I expected. But just to be kind of silly I said out loud, I heard you liked Christmas, I hope if you're still hanging around up here you enjoy these presents. As I said that I reached up and put my hand on one of the rafters. As I did it, I knocked something off the rafter. I picked it up. It was a Christmas card which read, wishing your family a Merry Christmas open it up and the old man's name is signed inside. It was literally the only thing in the entire attic. Now the rational part of me knew it was just a complete coincidence, someone had just put that card up there and forgot about it when they were cleaning out his attic after he passed. But regardless, that card still goes up above my fireplace every Christmas. When I was in high school around 2005, my friend had a bunch of us over to hang out. Some guys were in the basement and three of us, emphasize three, were upstairs in his bedroom playing on his computer. This was back in the day of actual desktop computers. So the three of us were huddled around his computer desk and coincidentally, looking up creepy shit. We came across some site that played Stairway to Heaven backwards. When you play it backwards it says Sad Satan and just sounds super creepy. Anyway, my one friend came upstairs and took a photo of us sitting at the computer with an old flip phone. As the night went on, we all ended up hanging in the basement. My friend who took the photo shows it to me nonchalantly. When I looked at the photo, I noticed that my one friend Ryan was in the photo with his arms around us posing for the photo. 
I said to my friend who took the photo, Ryan wasn't up there with us. How is he in this photo? Remember, there were only three of us in the bedroom. Ryan being there makes it four of us. So then I show it to my friend Ryan and he was like what the fuck. He said he was in the basement the entire time. My friends were freaked out for about 5 minutes and then moved on and totally forgot about it. However, all these years later it still freaks me out. We don't actually know how old the house was in NY, apparently the building that held the records burned down in 1924 so that's how old they say every house was. The previous owner moved in when he was 5 and then died in it in his 90s in the early 00s. Move in day I'm resting in one of the upstairs rooms, I hear loud angry stomping in the attic over the room to the right of me. Husband hears it from downstairs, that would be two stories below. Wondering WTF my problem was, he comes up and asks what's wrong. I told him it wasn't me and we both shrugged. I went up to the attic to investigate, there was nothing but an old toilet, a box of old photos in the corner with a trunk of honest to god Nazi stuff. Like a 30x2 banner, an armband, a helmet. A freaking grenade. There was an American pilot helmet too. Researching I discovered the previous owner helped liberate some town in France, that banner used to go across over the road. The armband was from an enlisted person according to the type of stitching. We had house guests over one time, and they heard the stomping too. It's unmistakable, loud and angry run stomping from the stairway up to the attic over to the toilet slash stuff in the corner. We jokingly referred to the ghost as moaning myrtle. That night the house guest said someone was choking her as she was falling asleep. Sincerely freaked out. The guest room was directly under the photo area in the attic so after that I blessed and anointed the house. We never had another incident. When I was 22 I moved into an apartment in the upstairs of this Victorian house from the 1880s. It used to be a one-family home but they separated the building. There was another apartment down the hall from mine and then downstairs was an insurance company. I had my own entrance that was separate from the business. It was a beautiful place with stained glass windows and some creaky ass hardwood floors. It didn't have any AC or a dishwasher but when you're 22 you'll deal with it. Anyway, the first few nights were uneventful but then some weird shit started happening. I would hear the front door knob jiggle like someone was trying to get in. I looked through the peephole and there was no one there. Weird, but nothing too crazy. Then it escalated to hearing the click 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 of high heels on my wooden floors. It was like someone was pacing back and forth in my living room. I kept chalking it up to the house settling. I mean, it was old as fuck. But what really freaked me out was when my medicine cabinet started opening by itself. It was one of those old ones that were built into the wall in my bathroom. At night I could hear it creak open. I'd get up, close it, and head back to bed. Sometimes it'd stay closed for the rest of the night and others the fucker would open and I'd close it multiple times. I was getting freaked out and honestly a little annoyed. So one day I said out loud please stop messing with the cabinet, you're driving me crazy. And it didn't happen again. I lived there for a year before moving out of town. When I was a child the house on the corner caught fire. My brother's friend, he was maybe 9 years old, passed due to smoke. A couple of years later the house is now being lived in by another family. My friends and I are screwing around in the front of my house, and we see the drapes start to move in the house. We wave and think nothing about it. The next morning the family pulls in and starts to unpack. I ask who did you have watching the house last night? The guy who owns the house comes over, and asks what did I mean? I explain what me and my buddies were doing. He stops and I see the hair standing up on his head. He states no one. That's when I tell him the drapes on the second floor were moving around. A week later his son is riding his bike around the block. So I ask him if stuff moves around a lot? The kid says nothing. I then ask if there is a ball that is always on the stairs on the second floor? Note my brother's friend used to leave a ball on the stair well, just a bad habit he had. That's when the guy sons raises an eyebrow and asks how did I know? I tell him to ask, insert the dead name here. To stop and pick his ball up. At 11 PM the kid bounces through the door yelling and screaming it moved. It moved. I look up to the window and see the curtain move again really slow. One week later the house is back on the market. I have several stories from my grandparents house, I'll tell the ones I remember the most. First one, my grandpa went to church while grandma stayed home. She went to make a small and fast errand, when she was returning the neighbor asked her as she had guests since they were loudly moving tables and chairs and my grandma just answer oh, no, I don't have guests over and went into the house like nothing happened. Second one. This happened a long time ago when my grandma was a teacher. She was checking papers when my grandpa, uncles and mom went to church yeah ick again. She heard a loud sound coming from my uncle's room and went to check to see a belt in the crib, she grabbed it and said so you alive or not, huh? 
and went back to checking papers like nothing happened yeah ick again. Third story, divided in two parts. A long time ago my when my aunt moved in to live with my uncle she woke up during the night to see a shadow in the shape of a lady go from their room all the way to the kitchen, there was nobody outside and the light poles on the street didn't reflect light into the room. Years after, this room is basically my sister's and I when we go over. I woke up during the night to see the shadow of the lady, I just stared at it for a few minutes and went back to sleep while she made her way to the kitchen I was scared af though. My parents last house was haunted as shit and no one believed me, until I moved out. My mom kinda thought something was fishy but never fully accepted that it was haunted until later. I would mostly hear bumps and thumps in the night but the first incident I remember really fucking with me was when my mom and I were sitting on the couch and we heard silverware falling in the kitchen. When I got up to investigate I found that the brownie knife that was placed in the bottom of the brownie pan was not only on the floor but halfway down the hall a good 7 to 8 feet from the kitchen. After that and a few other things falling slash moving unexpectedly I was convinced, my parents not so much. Until my stepdad would sleep in my room on occasion after I left which is where I experienced most of the hauntings which were just thumps and bumps in the night but they sounded like someone slamming a closed fist on the wall slash ceiling. One night he moved to my room, he snores very loud, and he said he heard the bump slash knocking and after he jokingly asked it what you want? The room got super cold to the point where he could see his breath and this motherfucker just goes to sleep after. Then a few weeks later my mom told me she rolled over in the middle of the night because she kept hearing someone whisper her name to see a tiny Asian woman kneeling at the side of her bed, to which she responded by rolling back around and going back to sleep. I don't know how they stayed there and just ignored that shit that, but I was glad I moved out when I did, unrelated to the hauntings. Little late to the party, but my casino and associated hotel are full of spirits. We call the friendliest one the hello ghost. She sounds like a middle-aged woman who is just trying to get your attention. If you've been with the company for more than a few months, she'll use your name, as in hey, Iqlalane? If she doesn't know your name yet, it'll just be an attention getting hello? Most of us say hello back. During our shutdown, managers stayed on as caretakers. I don't know if it was our hello ghost, but the GM described a middle-aged woman who yelled at him, hey, what are you doing? When he was going for coffee at the bar. He had always said we were nuts for saying the building was haunted. Our welcome back meeting started with him saying he finally believed us. There is something very angry in our cafe. Feels distinctly male to me, but could be anything. The moment you cross the threshold when it's closed, it feels like someone is screaming in your face. Going into the kitchen in the back, the anger is behind you. Ends completely when you reach the stairs in the back, off the kitchen, that lead to the storage area in the basement. To get to the executive offices, you have to go up a flight of stairs and cross a large conference room. Several employees have said it feels like someone is sitting in the corner, just watching. Feeling starts at the top of the stairs, and ends completely when you cross the doorway into the office space. In one of the restrooms, the toilets flush, paper towels dispense, and faucets run, randomly and completely on their own. Of the three, we recently hired an outside company to maintain the paper towels, so all new dispensers. Same helpful ghost, one adorable employee thanks the ghost for the paper towel, from the stall. The hotel is very small, less than 10 rooms. Picture a large house, and detached from the main property. We have reports from guests and employees of being touched or pushed, hearing children running and laughing in the halls, bed linens being messed up after maid service came through, TVs turning on by themselves. But the one that gets me about that building happened to two managers. Both got a call to the main line from a room, but when they answered there was no one there. All they heard was what sounded like an old radio broadcast in the background. Think early 1900s news broadcast. When they looked to see who was in that room, it wasn't rented. All in all, not too scary. Mostly just weird as fuck to live with on a regular basis. I would like to start off by saying I was always skeptical of ghosts until our family moved into the house in January of 2001. Seven months before we moved in, around the 4th of July, 2000 the previous owner committed suicide in my parents' bedroom. Every single one of my family members has experienced odd things happening, that we all attribute to a ghost. For instance, multiple times a day, it sounds like the garage door is opening slash closing, without anyone being near the garage. Once, when I was little, my mom and I were home by ourselves and we heard someone pacing on the second floor. It unnerved us so much we left until my dad arrived, as we thought someone else might actually be in the house. But the craziest thing, above all, is one summer I was having a fire with some friends in the backyard. And from the ashes I see numbers start appearing in a sequence, repeatedly. 9 to 3 to 20 to 36 over and over. It was one of the oddest things I have ever seen. 
It being early July I immediately wondered if it had anything to do with our ghost. So the next morning, I looked through the local obituaries from 2000 and low and behold the previous night was the 15th anniversary of the previous owner's suicide. I'm not sure what the numbers mean, but my best guess is that it's a date, September 3, 2036. I live in a 50-year-old apartment building. A lot of paranormal stuff has happened here. A little background on what we believe is one of the ghosts hunting out building. When I was around 4 to 5 years old, during a Christmas lunch one of the neighbors had some friends over, one had been dealing with his parents' divorce, and struggled with depression. He told my neighbor he needed to use the bathroom. Locked himself in a bedroom, and before anyone could stop him, he jumped killing himself. I saw him fall that day. I feel sorry for him and my neighbor has never forgotten him for not noticing earlier. Fast forward a couple of months later, I was watching Digimon in the small studio. My mom and grandma were in the kitchen making dinner. I hear a female voice calling my name or that's what I thought. I muted Digimon since I wanted to clearly understand if my mom was calling me, right then and there I hear a female voice humming. It was a new episode of Digimon and I didn't know if it was a character humming and I thought the TV had something wrong. It was supposedly muted right? Well I was about to tell my parents that the TV was not working properly when I noticed the sound didn't come from the TV but right next to it. Like 50 centimeters away from the TV where there was nothing. I got scared and ran to the kitchen. My mom went and said there was nothing wrong with the TV. 10 years ago we started noticing weirder stuff happen. Our security guards would tell us that they kept seeing a white figure come out of the parking lot area and stand in front of pedestrians, and would sit and sometimes fly towards the sky. It would sometimes follow people as to trying to get their attention. It was all captured in the cameras. This has since stopped as the camera system was upgraded. Also, several guards have been scared by loud screaming into their ears. They have heard whistling in the parking lot, of course they check everywhere but it's so late at night that it wasn't a child pranking them. They even heard whistling and the source of sound moving from place to place and even seemingly going towards the sky, it wasn't the wind as those were windless nights. People have heard their names being called by male and female voices. A dark figure has appeared multiple times in the basement scaring neighbors. I have seen a little girl running in my apartment, she wears a white dress and has straight black hair. She seems to be around 4 to 7 years old. Nobody has died at that age in my building. The most annoying thing that happened was a few years ago. During two months my dog would wake me up between 3.10 to 3.43 am, usually the later, every single day. I couldn't sleep properly as I had a lot of work from high school. The thing is my dog barked like crazy, he was scared. He wouldn't stop barking and wouldn't move from the front door. I called the security guard Ocking if he had heard any door opening prior to my dog barking or if a neighbor had arrived drunk but he denied anything. I still asked him to keep an eye if there was a sleepwalker. That was my hypothesis for the first two weeks. I started to lose my mind, I couldn't sleep and I had to lock my dog in my bedroom and hug him until he felt safe. It could take at max two hours and by then I had to get ready for school. After a while my dad and I noticed that before my dog started barking the automatic lights from the floors would turn on as if someone was going up the stairs. It stopped at our floor and the dog would start barking like crazy, my dad swung the floor open trying to find a neighbor probably the culprit of our two-week nightmare, but there was no one. My dog stood in the doorframe, shaking, showing his teeth SND barking in fear. He wouldn't come to the hall with us. This went on for six more weeks, and I couldn't let my dog sleep in my room as he would start barking anyway. It drove me insane. I'm pretty sure none of my neighbors slept well too, but I was so mad that I literally screamed at the ghost to leave me and my dog alone. I would pray for him to go to heaven, and it stopped after a while. It was nuts. Also, my sister claims she saw the devil but I'm more inclined to believe that it was sleep paralysis.